I want to talk about a uh, condominium high-rise collapse that happened during the early 80s in South Florida area. At that time, there seemed to be a lot of drug money around, and for them to get rid of the money, they invested in bil building real estate, and specifically high-rise condominiums, as you see here. Now, what happened was that the structure, as it was being built, at about the 10th floor the, of construction, the entire building collapsed and killed 11 people that were working on the ground floor. Now, what happened? Well, I worked in the Florida area as a construction manager for four years during the late 80s, and what I researched was that all the proper construction management was performed on this project. As you see, the process for constructing a concrete structure of this kind is that a general contractor will contract with a concrete contractor. Now, he could be one in the same. Now, the concrete trade has a reinforcing steel supplier, which we call rebar, uh, supply the reinforcing steel for the structure. As you also see here, he obtains a concrete mix design and engineered shoring drawings for the supporting structure as he forms and pours the concrete structure. Now, the reinforcing steel shop drawings are submitted for review by the structural engineer. If you don't know what reinforcing steel shop drawings are, we call it rebar. The structural engineer of record designs the concrete structure with sizes and shapes of the floor system and the columns and what they call the shear walls around the elevator and, and stairwell shafts. He designs the reinforcing steel that will go into the makeup of these structures. He does engineering calculations to confirm Firm that his design meets the codes for these high rises. He does not go into a detailed drawing on each piece of rebar in the structure. That is what the re rebar supplier's detailer does. He shows every rebar on his drawings so that his shop could then cut and bend the rebar for installing it in his forms. Then he submits those detailed shop drawings per the plans and specifications through the system for approval. He sends them through, he sends them through his concrete trade who then submits them to the general contractor or construction manager. The general contractor or construction manager then submits the drawings through the architect's office for review and then he sends them on to the structural engineer of record. He does that with the shoring shop drawings and the concrete mix design also. For the mix design, the structural engineer designs the concrete for the structure. For example, he may state that the concrete must be 4,000 PSI, which is pounds per square inch. Then the concrete supply company must submit a mix design that conforms to that design. As you see here, he submits everything. In this case, all items were checked and approved by the structural engineer and sent back to the concrete trade and his suppliers. So what happened? Why did this building collapse? Well, when they sent inspectors and investigators to the aftermath of the collapse, what they found out was that on some of the top floors, the reinforcing steel that was L-shaped, as you see here, was emitted during placement. It was an oversight, it was missed. 11 tin knockers that were installing ductwork on the first floor were killed. Now, the state of Florida became proactive. They immediately made it mandatory that to build in the state of Florida, you must obtain a contractor's license. And to obtain that license, you had to take a four hour test. Now, I took the test in the late 80s and received my contractor's license as I was a contractor at the end of the 80s. It's an all-encompassing test of all the components in the construction industry with engineering, construction means and methods, code review, safety, and general overall construction management of a project site. There was a fellow next to me who said it was his sixth time trying to pass the test. I passed it the first time and was a licensed contractor. They also enacted that every building that was over two floors in height had to have a threshold inspector come out to the job site and inspect the reinforcing steel placement before the concrete pour on each floor. So what do we learn from this uh, catastrophe? Well, number one, provide professional structural design on all your important structure. In this case, they did. To 
full-time quality control inspector, somebody like a threshold inspector that the, that Florida has, have somebody that is does nothing more than just checks the reinforcing steel and checks to make sure the concrete's being poured correctly with the concrete testers and uh, and and whatever. Now I have a subsequent separate video on how we perform our quality control on our projects, and I'll get that out in in the future. Number three, the provide a quality control checklist, which I'll, I'll go over that in another uh, video. Provide periodic inspections by the structural engineer of record. Um, have money in the budget for him to come out to the job site and review the work in place so that it's in compliance with his overall design. Qualify all your design professionals. Confirm that they perform this type of work before. And number six, provide experience construction management on your projects. Thank you.